Welcome to Bible Believers Fellowship, where we love you enough to tell you the truth. On these programs, you will be able to follow our expository study of the authorized King James Version as we read verse by verse through books and occasionally tackle important topics for the purpose of helping Bible believers gain a thorough and accurate understanding of God's Word. We now invite you to join us in our study. 1 Corinthians 15, beginning of verse 51, and tonight is a, a refresher. Uh, we're studying prophecy, and we're going to take kind of a different look at it tonight. But we're going to look at the fact that the stage is set. And we're going to start by reading 1 Corinthians 15, 51, 58 through 58, and let's get a bit of a perspective on this before we even start discussing the stage. So I'm going to start in verse 51, and you guys jump in on the even. And let's read this together. Behold, I show you a mystery. We shall not all sleep, but we shall all be changed. In a moment, in the twinkling of an eye, at the last trump, for the trumpet shall sound, and the dead shall be raised incorruptible, and we shall be changed. For this corruptible must put on incorruption, and this mortal must put on immortality. So when this corruptible shall have put on incorruption, and this mortal shall have put on immortality, then shall be brought to pass the saying that is written, Death is swallowed up in victory. O death, where is thy sting? O grave, where is thy victory? The sting of death is sin, and the strength of sin is the law. But thanks be to God, which giveth us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. Therefore, my beloved brethren, be ye steadfast, unmovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord, forasmuch as ye know that your labor is not in vain in the Lord. When you study prophecy correctly, that's where you end. See, a lot of people study prophecy just because it's kind of spooky. It's like a, a, a scary movie. And that's why when you talk to them and you try to encourage them with the, the rapture, for example, they don't want to hear about it. They want to hear about the Antichrist. Ooh, and people who don't take the mark get their heads cut off. Well, that's all true, but the purpose of studying prophecy and the reason God gave prophecy to, to be studied was to encourage us. And it was to say, number one, God is in control. God's not being fooled by any of this. And time is short. It says in verse 52, in a moment, in the twinkling of an eye. That's not a blink of an eye. It's the twinkling of an eye. And I've heard different uh, explanations of what that means. But uh, I, I may have already used this, but I remember when I was younger... Uh, the preacher would say, okay, I want everybody to blink. Ready, go. And everybody blink. He said, no, faster. And he'd go, and he'd go faster. And everybody started blinking, yeah. tried to get you to blink. He said, still not fast enough. This is still going to be quick, faster than that. Uh -huh. <laughs> the twinkling of an eye is faster than you can blink. And everybody's trying to... You know. Oh, no, I'm faster. <laughs> <laughs> How about this, preacher? Yeah. You know. Yeah. <laughs> well, I wasn't ready. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's... Uh, it's kind of a, a non-issue. We were talking about it in a Bible study the other day that uh, the, the question as to when the dead in Christ rise. And the dead in Christ rise first, and then we which are alive and remain rise after that. But it's not going to be a long stretch. We're not going to sit there and say, hmm, I wonder when we're turn coming. You know? So it's not even anything to argue. It's just going to happen. The dead in Christ and then us. Faster than that. So... I want to emphasize before we move on that uh, we don't have an, another moment to spare. The next moment, the next twinkling of an eye could be it. And there's just, uh, I mean, I don't want to just throw stones at other people. All of us, and I myself, have to remind myself constantly, this could be it. There, there aren't any other things that have to happen before that rapture takes place. Paul said in a moment, it could happen any time, any moment, imminent, 
return of Christ is what Christians have always believed in. People say, oh, that pre-trib rapture, that's only come around in the last few years. That's not true. Not everybody understood all the parts of the pieces. But Christians have always looked for Jesus to return at any moment. And it was only from Augustine and the whole all millennial we're building the kingdom on earth thing that started to uh, in, influence people and corrupt their understanding. But Bible-believing Christians from the very beginning have looked for Jesus to come at any moment and take us out of here. And that's where we want to start. The stage is set for the rapture. But then there's also the fact that there are plenty of things uh, revealed to us that say, uh, this is going to happen, and this is going to happen. And then we can look and we can say, well, wait a minute, if that's going to happen, then the world has to be ready for that to happen. And if it is ready for that to happen, that's a sign we're ready. And if this and that and this and that, and they, the number of things are all lined up, begin to increase, you know, you, you've got to be getting closer. Well, we're living in a time where everything's ready. Things that through church history, Christians believed Jesus could come at any moment, but they thought, oh, but I wonder how that's going to work out, because it doesn't... Like Israel. Right. Israel becoming a nation is one of those things that has to be in place. Well, since 1948, it's been in place. Before that, they said, Israel's going to be brought back. They're going to be brought back. And now we look back and say, Israel has been brought back. Right. The stage is set as far as Israel is concerned. The stage is set as far as the rapture is concerned. Um, let's turn back to Zechariah 12. And in Zechariah 12, verse, verses 9 and 10. In Zechariah 12. I'll read verse 9, you join verse 10. And it shall come to pass in that day that I will seek to destroy all the nations that come against Jerusalem. And I will pour upon the house of David and upon the inhabitants of Jerusalem the spirit of grace and of supplications, and they shall look upon me whom they have pierced, and they shall mourn for him as one mourneth for his only son, and shall be in bitterness for him as one that is in bitterness for his firstborn. Now, of course, you see there, Jesus is called the firstborn from among the dead. You see that he's uh, the only begotten son. And uh, it says that Israel will look upon him and mourn as for an only son. It also says they will look upon him whom they have pierced. That would be Jesus. When he returns, you're not going to know him because he looks like Kenny Loggins, we've said. And he got these pictures of, of, of Jesus all over the place. We don't know what he looked like, but we do know this. He has nail scars. He still bears the scars of suffering for you and I and paying for our sins. That's how we'll know Jesus. But uh, he's a Jew. He's not black or white. <laughs> but uh, we won't know him because of his skin color either. We'll know him because of the scars. But in this text, it is clear that Israel is going to be in possession of Jerusalem. When did that happen? Anybody? 1967-68 is when the 1967 war and in 1968 it was basically officially uh, the possession of Israel. Now, what do you see on the news if you're watching? They're trying to get them to split it up again. They want the Catholics to have their portion and the Orthodox and the Armenians to have their portion and they want to give the, is it East Jerusalem to the Palestinians for a capital and then the, the Jews are only going to have a tiny little piece of it. And Netanyahu said, forget it. And I hope he sticks to his guns literally on that. <laughs> but we do know that when God comes, when Jesus returns, He says that He will pour out on the house of David and upon the inhabitants of Jerusalem. Inhabitants. So Israel is going to be in control of Jerusalem. Right now, that piece of furniture is on the stage and it's set. It's ready. So we can see this over and over. Uh, turn over to Romans 11. But in Romans 11, Paul is uh, telling us Gentiles not to get cocky about the fact that we've been grafted in. And a lot of Gentiles have been that way. And they say, well, we've replaced Israel. Israel's finished. And 